We've been testing a whole host of mountain bikes under £600. We've had about five bikes in this category and as ever it's always one of the most interesting categories to test because bikes at this price point, they might be someone's first proper mountain bike so it's really important you get the right thing because it might make or break your entire mountain biking career. The bikes we tested are the Specialized Pitch Sport 650B, the Voodoo Bazango, the Canyon Grand Canyon AL 3.9, Scott Aspect 940, Cube Analog 29, and the Calibre Gauntlet 650B. So the Pitch Sport 650B, Specialized taken a bit of a kicking in recent years from direct sales competitors. Those people can offer much, much better kit for the money simply because they don't have to have distributors and then bike shops taking a cut of the profit. That said, the pitch is still pretty reasonable for the money. As you expect from Specialized, it's actually got a really nice aluminium frame and the fact that the pitch uses smaller 650B wheels means that it's got quite a light and agile feel to it. On the downside, it's quite old school in terms of the cockpit. That means very narrow bars, a great big long stem, and worst of all, that's compounded by a Suntour fork that really isn't very good. It's quite bendy, uh, the damping's really easily confused, and that means that when it comes to pushing on a bit harder, the Specialized isn't really much of an encouragement. It's not a bad bike by any means, especially if you're going to probably mix it up with maybe a bit of towpath, a bit of commuting, that sort of thing. But if you're looking for a dedicated off-road bike, it's probably not going to be your first choice. The Scott Aspect 940 might be at the budget end of Scott's range, but it does a really impressive job of looking like its more expensive siblings. It's got a nicely made aluminium frame. It uses 29er wheels, which is really good. They help smooth out the bumps so you get less feedback. And they also calm down the handling a little bit, so if you're maybe a little bit more nervous, then you'll get less of a twitchy feeling to the bike. Something Scott's done really well is that they've put pretty good geometry, similar to that of their more expensive bikes, on this bike. They haven't just made it short and steep and sort of low bottom bracket to try and comfort beginners. The downside is it's quite heavy. That's just a function of the spec. That said, the spec might be heavy, but it works really well. This is a bike that's ripe for a bit of upgrading if you're willing to put in the time and money. Cube has always been known for delivering really high value bikes despite still selling through bike shops. That actually shows in the Analog 29. The Suntour fork does a good job of controlling the bumps and a really interesting feature of this bike is that Cube offer it in a number of different wheel sizes depending on which frame size you use. If you have a small sized frame you can have 650B wheels, in the medium sized frames you can either have 650 or 29 and in the large frames it's just 29 wheels. We chose the 29er simply because bigger wheels iron out the bumps better. However, there are a number of flaws with the analog. Part of the problem is the Schwalbe Smart Sam tires. They're pretty awful. The second is that it's got a pretty old school cockpit setup. That means a long stem, narrow bars, and quite twitchy head angle. That's not so inspiring when you're riding off-road. Ever since Kenya arrived on the scene, they've been really disrupting things in the bike industry, especially at the cheaper end of the market. That means that the Grand Canyon AL 3.9 offers superb value for money with some really nice kit on it. On the flip side, Canyon's bikes, especially at this price, have been known for feeling a little bit traditional. That means it's fairly steep, uh, it's quite cross country. Um, admittedly, it does have quite a long stem, but that's actually balanced by some nicely wide 720mm uh, Crank Brothers bars. Elsewhere, there's a RockShox XC30 fork. That's actually really well controlled. Again, it's not the stiffest, we're not really going to expect that at this price, but the damping works really well to iron out the bumps, especially in conjunction with the larger 29er wheels. There's some really nice touches in the spec as well. That means you get a chain set with gearing that's matched to the larger wheels, has slightly smaller ratios. You also get a nicely wide range cassette at the back and a spread of nine gears. The chain set also uses an Octolink splined bottom bracket interface rather than a square taper. You don't notice that from the outside, but it's much, much tougher. If you're a fan of traditionally fast and snappy cross-country bikes, then the Canyon's handling will be right up your street. I couldn't help feeling that if the Canyon had a slightly longer fork, a slightly slacker head angle, then it'd be even better than it already is. As it stands, if you like doing big miles and big days out, the Canyon's spot on. If you prefer to push yourself hard down hills, then it might not be the right thing for you. Although it's limited to British buyers, the Voodoo Bazango has always done really well in our tests at this price. That's because they've managed to put on an incredible kit list for the money. 
and it's a really nice frame too. It's got 29er wheels shod with some properly chunky tyres, it's got really good trail geometry and best of all it's got an absolutely superb Suntour fork with a through axle. That means the fork, despite the big wheels, is really nice and stiff and you can confidently place it where you want it to go. The gearing's great as well, it's actually got a 10 speed block at the back with a nice wide range and that's clutch equipped so it means that the chain doesn't fall off as much. The cockpit setup is good as well, it's got a short stem, it's got decently wide bars and elsewhere the spec is really nicely thought out. Out of the box, probably the only downside is that the frame is pretty stiff. They've actually tweaked it again for 2016 to make it a bit smoother, but even so it's got quite a large down to seat post which will whack you in the bottom if you hit something. On the plus side, that does mean that you can upgrade to a dropper post pretty easily when you want to. If you're lucky enough to be able to get your hands on one, then the Bazango is a really tough bike to beat at this price. Calibur is a new brand from uh, UK chain Go Outdoors. They might be pretty new on the scene, but the bikes they've been producing have been really impressive, especially at this price point. The Gauntlet is a new model which comes with 650B wheels. It's got a nicely made alloy frame. As ever, they've managed to pack in a really good spec for the money. That means a RockShox XC32 fork up front with 120mm of travel. It's air sprung, so that means you can adjust it for rider weight. The other really nice spec bits and pieces uh, come from WTB. That means you get grippy tyres, uh, you get a really nice and comfy saddle, uh, and the rest of the finishing kit is good. It's got a nice modern cockpit, handles really well. There's a proper 10-speed cassette outback courtesy of SRAM, and that's paired with a double chainring up front. In fact, one of our very few criticisms of this bike would be that the SRAM X5 level equipment maybe doesn't last quite as well as Shimano spec rivals. Go Outdoors might be a UK brand, but the really good news is they actually ship internationally. For a small extra charge, that means you can get the bike shipped to pretty much anywhere in the world, including Australia and America. So for the verdict on these bikes, I'll pass you over to our veteran bike tester, Guy Kesteven. This category is always an interesting one, purely because every pound that gets spent on a bike, whether it's you spending it or manufacturers trying to spec a bike, is absolutely crucial. We're not talking about spec details here, we're talking about big fundamental aspects of the bike that tend to shine out more so at this price point almost than any other. In particular, this year, we're seeing big wheels as the answer. Not plus tyres, you're still not gonna be able to get them at this price point but both the bikes that have scored really well in this category are 29ers. Regardless of front mech style or whether it's a triple or a double chain set, more 27.5 bikes lose their chains over roots, rocks, that kind of sections we've been riding than the 29ers. And that sounds a bit like a soap advert conclusion, but you know, 29ers keep their chains on, 27.5s don't. And obviously those same rattles that are taking your chain off are coming through to the rider and they undermine control, they undermine comfort and that's what we're looking for at this price point. Canyon have done very strongly with an Internet Direct uh, kit package but very much old school geometry which while the bike's light and responsive and kind of suits the way it rides you're going to feel a lot more confident on the Voodoo Bizango which yet again comes top of the category. More confident handling, decent Ard Maxxis Ardent tyres, sorted frame, the only real complaint we have about the Voodoo Bazango is the fact that the lock-on grip came undone, but that's an easy thing to find a solution for, especially when its performance at this price is just still streets ahead of anything else. As well as having relatively old-school geometry, the uh, Canyon's also got a quick-release fork, whereas the Bazango scores again with a QR15. Uh, it's the Sunto version, it's easy to use, and uh, it even works on both sides of the fork, so it's a double win. You're getting a stiffer, more secure fork and better handling. As you've heard, the Voodoo Bazango is a clear winner. It's got great handling, it's got great geometry, it's really confidence-inspiring ride, and it's gonna encourage you to get out there and ride more and more and try harder. Sadly, it's just limited to UK buyers, so unless you can get someone to ship one to your country for you, you're out of luck. That means that if you're more of a cross-country style rider, the Canyon is probably gonna be a really good bet. Okay, the handling's a little bit old school and it's more about going sort of like long and far rather than steep and fast, but it's a cracking value bike. If you fancy something a little bit more trail orientated, a little bit more playful, then the Calibre has really got to be worth a look. Again, you can have it shipped pretty much anywhere in the world and it's quite a fun and engaging ride that's more confident on the downs than the Canyon is. 
So once again, it's come down to some very simple things. The first thing of all is who can pack the most value into a bike. But the second, and arguably the most important, is getting the geometry right. Despite geometry not actually costing anything, it's cost a lot of manufacturers in this test. Bikes that are otherwise ranked really highly, we've just had to kick to the wayside because of their sketchy, uninspiring handling. On the flip side, brands that really get it and put together a good, modern, well-handling package, especially when that's tied in the next on spec, they're almost unbeatable. If a bike fills you with confidence, you're going to want to ride it more, and that can only be a good thing.